Alright guys, so recently we have watched a video of Logan Paul on his podcast with his best friend who is a Christian and he was just expressing his love for Jesus but Logan Paul was actually going out of his way to disrespect Jesus and his best friend at the same time. I think he, he was saying that his best friend needs therapy, that Jesus is not doing it for him. He just can't wrap his mind around it. And I feel like, yo, like, even if you're not a Christian, it's not hard to understand, like, like the power that Jesus held. First off, every single scholar and scientist believes that Jesus knows, actually, for a fact, that Jesus was alive and he was a, he was a walking man. And now, if you want to get any textual evidence, the same way we have textual evidence on George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, you would go to a textbook or you will go to a book. You get what I'm saying? To get textual evidence of this of the of Jesus that was that everyone agrees on that was actually here on this earth, you just go to the Bible and then you read about Jesus. You got the same exact way you'll go to a textbook or encyclopedia to read about George Washington, that's where you go to read about Jesus. And you'll just read about how great this man was and all the miracles that he was doing. It's not that hard to it's not that, it's not hard to wrap your brain around Jesus. It's really, for me, it's really, really hard to wrap my brain around, around God and, like, the being of God. You get what I'm saying? Because Jesus was the physical manifestation of God so we can actually be able to just have a representation so our mind could fathom it. You get what I'm saying? He's the only man that never did commit in one sin, many miracles, raising people from the dead. So that's the best understanding, but further than that, bro, it's very, very hard to wrap my brain around. All right, but getting back on topic. So after after uh, Logan Paul was like just you know just basically disrespecting his best friend and his beliefs, w while at the same time he was saying that we should respect everyone's beliefs, which is very contradicting. It seems as if the next two to three weeks he was facing a lot of backlash, obviously. But not only on the internet, in real life. It seems like there were just certain events that weren't lining up and he was just having a hard time in real life. So that's what we're about to look into right here. We have a video right here titled, Logan Paul Mocked God and Got What He Deserved. So um, let's get straight into this. Now I do want to make clear, like I, I don't really know of... I don't really know of God physically punishing people. Like, well, no, I actually do. God did burn down a whole city for the for the wicked deeds that were going on over there, like Sodom and Gomorrah. So, yeah, I guess God does do that, actually. Look at Paul recently mocked God. He believes that it's I, I silly. I, and then this happened. I made some pretty uh, out-of-line comments uh, to George. The following three weeks have been the hardest period <laughs> of my life. We were invited by Qatar. We landed Qatar. Camera stripped from us. Twenty thousand dollar camera, no problem. What? It's just little things here and there. Things are showing up. We misscheduled. Um, got violent food poisoning. Next day, got alcohol poisoning. Our luggage was delayed, so we had to close to get to our events. Me and Mike got a massive fight. But rather what? than him complaining that it wasn't fair to our events, me and Mike got a massive fight. Bro, this is his friend. This is his other friend, Mike. Oh, what's going on, Logan Paul? He's fine with all his friends, bro. There's something I don't know. This must be something in Logan Paul that's very like disruptive because that's like his only other friend. But rather than him complaining that it wasn't fair, he actually thought that he deserved it. Qatar was the first time I felt the wrath of God. Ironically, I defamed Jesus and God, and I felt his wrath. It yeah, was just yeah. it was very telling to me how the karmic energy of the universe this is what i'll call it just went right back around and, and put me in my place but even though george was quick to forgive logan for mocking his faith the fans didn't believe that logan deserved his forgiveness bro how many times are people going to forgive him every time he gets away from it you cannot apologize time and time again and just be forgiven george did the right thing by forgiving him for a fact because he's a christian like imagine like imagine if Imagine if God didn't forgive you. As a Christian, we want to be, we want to at least try our best to to have God transform us to be more like Him. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, we could all agree on this. Whether you, we can all agree on this. Not forgiving someone actually hurts more because you're holding on to much more resentment. You're holding on to that offense that they, that they did to you. You know what I mean? So as long as you're holding on to that offense and not forgiving them, you're always gonna have that little that that hurt in, inside of you. So. 
I believe George did the right thing. The point is, he ain't sorry and he don't care. Y'all still be feeding this man and he does everything else but say he is sorry. But even though the fans didn't believe that George should have forgiven Logan, what they didn't know was what happened the night before the podcast episode that enabled George to forgive Logan so easily. The night before it happened, bro, I'm sitting and I'm reading the Bible and I literally say a prayer to God. I know you love him, but I want I want I want to kill him. I want to punch him in the face, but I know you don't want me to. And I know you love him. And I know this opportunity between two best friends can open a lot of people's eyes to who God is. So I sat there and I go, God, I go, what do you want from me? God says, be quiet and love. And like, bro, like I felt it. I'm in the, I'm in the kitchen, Bell's cooking dinner. And I sat there and I go, Bell, I think God just talked to me. Like, I'm not trying to be like a lunatic. And hear me out. I think I just got to talk out of love. I got to talk out of love. And she's like, why do you say that? I was like, I don't know. I just feel like I got to talk out of love. And I sat on the couch and I'm just sitting off and I'm like, bro, what does he, what does he want from me? How can I go and, 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 and portray Jesus in the best way possible? She goes, Hey, Adam is blowing up your phone. I answered the phone. He goes, bro, I got to tell you something. Jesus told me to tell you he loves you. And yes. And I'm like, what? I go, why did you just say that? Bell put her knife down. I go, buddy, 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 back up. Why did you say that? He goes, I have no idea what's going on. He goes, three times in my prayer, God interrupted me. He goes, go tell George whatever he feels in his heart is right. And it was at that moment, bro, where I was like, all we had to learn is like, regardless of what you say, and regardless of what I say, speak out of love. And to be honest, bro, like it just came to the conclusion of this. There is a very real God that will walk through this journey with you. That God is right near you, neither him or me or Mike or any single person here will ever abandon a man like you because you're not worth abandoning. And I love you. God damn. So from George's point of view, wait, was he saying that God wouldn't abandon him or, or Mike that George wouldn't abandon him? Like, regardless of what you say, regardless of what I say, speak out of love. And to be honest, bro, like, it just came to the conclusion of this. There is a very real God that will walk through this yeah. journey with you. That God is right near you. Neither him or me or Mike or any single person here will ever abandon a man like you because you're not worth abandoning. And I love you. So from George's point of view, God prepped him to forgive Logan in advance by telling him that he should be calm and to show love to Logan. Now, I personally have no idea if George was hearing from God or not, but one thing that I do know is that one part of what he said is consistent with what God says about forgiveness in scripture. In Matthew 18, 22, the question of how many times you should forgive someone came up. Peter says to Jesus, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 seven times. times. Given the fuller context of this verse, the point is that we should keep forgiving people a near infinite amount of times. Yeah. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that we should enable bad behavior or refuse to put up appropriate boundaries. But <clears throat> what it does mean is that we should forgive people for the countless things that they've done to us. And the reason why is because of the near infinite things that God has forgiven us for. So as Christians, we exactly. should offer people what they don't deserve. And sometimes that's our forgiveness. And the reason and why we're able to do this is because God gave us forgiveness that we didn't deserve either. But if you're a Christian who refuses to forgive those who hurt you, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what do you mean? What? Christian who refuses to forgive those. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it's almost like, you know, like the way I think about it sometimes is like, you know, Jesus is like a friend. God is like a friend. And the more you kind of just interact with him, the more you become like him. And it's like, just understanding the love between, like the unconditional love of God, it allows you to love people more than you would have just learning it from man. Because realistically speaking, one thing that I've learned is that like, the definition of love when it comes to like man, like from like your friend or, or your boyfriend and girlfriend, like nine times out of 10, if not 99.9 .9 times out of 10, me, <laughs> I mean, like 99.9% .9 of the times is usually conditional love. But there is no such thing as conditional love. Like, if you love something, my belief is like, if you love, it should be unconditional. Because that's God's love. You feel what I'm saying? But what do you guys think about this? I believe George did the right thing. And you know what I'm saying? Like everyone is in their own life journey, especially like spiritually, physically, just everything. Yeah. So it seems like, I guess he's saying that God punished him in a way. But if you guys did watch this point of the video though, make sure you do like and subscribe. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. This ain't way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace. Love y'all.